Should you land on your heel, your midfoot or your forefoot while running? And does it even matter? What does the evidence say? That is what we will be talking about in today's video. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Göran, I'm an athlete, coach and physio and on the topic we're covering today, I was for several years misled by running gurus who claim to have all the answers. First of all, what are the most common foot striking patterns among runners? Almeida et al. did a study back in 2015 examining the foot striking patterns among recreational runners. And they found that amongst these runners, 95.1% had a heel strike, 4.1% a midfoot strike, and only 0.8% landed on their forefoot. So, heel striking is for sure the most common foot striking pattern. But it's also a foot strike pattern that has gotten pretty bad reputation and many coaches have been talking about the importance of a midfoot or a forefoot uh, strike. So that begs the question, why has heel striking got such a bad reputation although it's the far most common striking pattern amongst runners? And is there a reason for all of these heel strikers to try to land on their midfoot or forefoot instead? The theory is behind midfoot or forefoot strike being better than landing on your heel that is presented is often that it is more economical to run in that way and that there's a reduction in the peak impact and that there's a reduction in the risk of running related injuries with a forefoot or midfoot strike. But are these just theories or is there actually evidence supporting this? Let's start to talk a bit about a big reason that the heel striking pattern got uh, a lot of bad press about 10 years ago. So back in 2009 a book called Born to Run was released and it quickly became a really popular book. And I also read this book back then and I really liked it. One of the theses from this book was that the reason that most of us land on our heel while running is that the modern shoes are built up in the heel, meaning that the midsole is higher in the heel than there is in the forefoot. And this uh, should have made all of us uh, to run in a not so natural way, meaning to land on our heel instead of our midfoot or forefoot. I remember reading this book and it was such a compelling story where you got to join along when the author ran with the Tarahumara native Mexican tribe that were these super human uh, runners and they just ran with sandals, really thin sandals that were made of all the car tires that for sure had no heel to toe drop. And this was before I had become a physiotherapist and had a more scientific approach to knowledge so I bought everything in that book and it made sense and the storytelling was so mesmerizing and I was not the only one that was influenced uh, by this book at this time. This book created a huge new running trend of minimalistic running shoes and suddenly everyone was out uh, running trying to land on their forefoot and running with these super thin uh, minimalistic shoes that had uh, close to no cushioning and for sure no heel to toe drop. And this was probably not the best thing for many runners, including myself. And don't get me wrong here, I think Born to Run is a really great and entertaining book. But the conclusions that were drawn in the book had no evidence base whatsoever. And many runners actually ended up injured after jumping on this trend of natural running with these uh, super uh, thin shoes that uh, had very little cushioning and also they tried to switch uh, their running stride really quickly from a heel strike to a forefoot strike. I for sure believe that we humans are born to run with how our bodies are biomechanically built and when we were hunters and gatherers we didn't have these uh, super cushioned shoes. So why do I still think this minimalistic running trend wasn't the best for everyone? There were two main problems with people jumping onto this trend to change their foot striking pattern and run with minimalist shoes. First of all, it was supposed to be the natural way of running. And as I said, I fully agree on that because of course our ancestors didn't run around with a pair of alpha flies on the savannah. But they did also not run on flat hard surfaces, so how natural is it really to run on these modern surfaces with a minimalistic shoe? 
maybe it's not such a bad thing to have a little bit of artificial cushioning when we're going to run on an artificially hard and even surface. Secondly, when you quickly change your foot strike from heel to forefoot, what will happen is that the overall impact from running will be the same, but you'll just move the impact more from the knee and the thigh to the Achilles and the calf muscles. So when you do a quick switch in your running technique, your calf muscle and Achilles tendon will not be able to withstand the new load if you don't ease into it. So with this, I'm not saying that one foot striking pattern is better than the other. I'm just saying that if you quickly change what structures that will have to deal with the impact from landing when running, which is a pretty big impact, and do the change without easing into it and have a longer period of uh, building up to it, uh, you will change uh, how you load your muscles and tendon before they've had the chance to get strong enough. And that is a good recipe to get uh, injured. After the evidence I have read, I believe that it probably depends on your specific anatomy what kind of foot striking pattern that is best for you. Because the theory that everybody would be a forefoot or midfoot striker if it wasn't for these uh, modern shoes doesn't really hold up. Fatala et al did a study of a habitually barefoot population in Kenya and could see that also amongst this group that was born without modern shoes also they mostly landed on their heel while running with 72% of them uh, showing a heel striking pattern while running. But what does the evidence say about all the proposed benefits you'll get from mid door forefoot striking compared to heel striking? Well, Hamelin Group did a review on the topic back in 2017 and concluded that based on examining the research literature that changing to a mid or forefoot strike does not improve running economy, does not eliminate an impact at the foot ground contact and does not reduce the risk of running related injuries. So maybe what part of the foot that hits the ground first when running isn't the most important thing to focus on. At least we don't have evidence to support that yet. And whatever you do, don't try to do really fast changes to your stride or the type of shoes you're wearing. Because our bodies are great at adapting to whatever we do. But often it takes a bit more time than we have patience for. And as I see it, putting the time and effort into trying to change your foot striking pattern is not worth it and is a high injury risk. If you want to run faster and stay injury free and enjoy running, I would put my focus into having a slow progression and build up in your training and a good consistency. If you want a more natural way of running, I would recommend staying off the pavement and run more on trails with varied surface that forces you to change your stride all the time. If you found this video interesting, I would appreciate it a lot if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And here you have two other videos you can watch. Thanks for watching, train smart, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.